अनुसंधान ऑल गुजरात इंटीग्रेटेड क्लासरूम सैटेलाइट ना माध्यम थी जोड़ती कड़ी इतले संधान गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीवन आई एम जागृत यू त्रिपाठी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर क्राइस्ट कॉलेज राजकोट टुडे आई एम हियर टू डिस्कस द कांसेप्ट्स ऑफ फाइनाइट डिफरेंसेस फाइनाइट डिफरेंसेस हैज many applications in the calculus of numerical analysis it also deals with the variations in function when the independent variable changes this changes may be equal or unequal intervals it also deals with the functional relationship that exists between the values assumed by the functions within some interval so let us discuss the concept of arguments and entries if we consider one function y is equals to fx and the values of x which are x0 x0 plus h x0 plus 2h and so on and regarding that corresponding values of y are y0 y1 y2 and so on then in that case the values these x zeros are called usually called the arguments and regarding the dependent values y are called the entries now let us define the different types of uh, differences to determine usually the application of finite differences is it is to de determine the values of fx like the for the given table values if we want to find out some functions then we can uh, use the concept of finite differences also it is useful to find out different calculus like integration or differentiation so there are mainly few differences which are supposed to be discussed amongst them few are listed here forward differences backward differences and central differences so if we begin our concept with forward differences forward differences are having the notation delta where if we have the corresponding values y0 y1 y2 for the equidistant values of x0 x1 up to xn if we want to define the forward difference then each values are subtracted from the preceding value of that y except y0 and the forward difference operator is usually denoted by the capital delta notation where it defines as if we want to define delta y0 it defines as y1 minus y0 same way followed by delta y1 it is defined as y2 minus y1 delta y2 if you want to define then it would be defined as y3 minus y2 like that so on we can define the first order differences now if we want to define the second order so in general form we have delta yi as yi plus 1 minus yi similarly we can define the second order differences it is denoted by delta 2 and it is nothing but the differences of the first order differences that is if we want to define delta 2 y0 that is delta y1 minus delta y0 similarly delta 2 y1 it is defined as delta y2 minus delta y1 and so on in general this delta 2 yn can be defined as delta yn plus 1 minus delta yn so this is how the second order differences are applied another difference is the backward differences the backward differences are having somewhat different notations and having different definition that means again we are differencing the values y1 minus y0 y2 minus y1 y3 minus y2 but if we denote it with the notation capital nebula y1 that is defined as y1 minus y0 we can observe from the definition that this nebula y1 value is exactly same as delta y0 
the relations amongst delta and nebula will be seen later. The same way if you want to define delta y2, that nebula y2 can be defined as y2 minus y1 and so on. Similarly, in general we can obtain nebula y n equals to y n minus y n minus 1. So, same way in this way we can define the second order backward differences also that is delta 2 y n second order backward differences are again the differences of the first order backward differences that is delta y n minus delta nebula y n minus 1. In general if we want to define nebula operator up to nth level that is delta n y k that will be found as nebula n minus 1 y k minus nebula n minus 1 y k minus 1. So, if we observe now the difference table, difference table is having a very wide applications to obtain certain particular difference values in a very direct and very easier manner. So, in the difference table if you observe the values which are given to us as x0, x1, x2 up to x3. This is this table is actually bounded for only 5 different values starts with x0, x1, x2, x3, x4 and corresponding to that values we have the values of entries y0, y1, y2, y3. So, in that way if you wish to define delta y0 that we have already seen the definition delta y0 is nothing but y1 minus y0. So, in the slide you can see that this values y1 minus y0 the condition is lower minus upper values. So, regarding that you can obtain delta y0 and as have, we have already seen that delta y0 is again denoted by nebula y1. Same way other values delta y1 it is exactly same as nebula y2, delta y2 exactly same as nebula y3 delta y3 exactly same as nebula y4. So, this is how all the first order differences can be obtained using the tables. Same as second order differences are displayed delta 2 y0 it is same as delta 2 y2, delta 2 y1 it is same as nebula 2 y3, delta 2 y2 it is same as nebula 2 y4. Similarly, third and fourth order differences are obtained. It should be noted that these tables for delta and nebula are applied only when the values of the x are at the equal distances. So, for this we have some practical problems to elaborate the ideas of this delta and nebula properly. So, if we have we are supposed to discuss some practical problems starting with the evaluation of differences applied on the different functions. Let us go with the very first question to evaluate the value of delta cos x. In this here we are having the value of the function f x is equals to cos x and now if we apply the definition of first order difference delta f x the definition is f of x plus h minus f of x. Applying the definition on the given function we will get cos x plus h minus cos x and using the concept of trigonometry we have the function relationship between cos x plus h minus cos x. So, we will use the concept cos alpha minus cos beta we have the relation cos alpha plus beta by 2 into that is minus 2 sin alpha plus beta by 2 into sin alpha minus beta by 2. So, using the relation of cos minus cos that is minus 2 sin sin we get minus 2 sin x plus h plus x by 2 minus or into sin x plus h minus x upon 2. So, as a result we got minus 2 sin h by 2 and sin x 
plus h by 2 as an answer. For more proper understanding, we are taking some more example. One more example which is based on say logarithm. If we have delta log of fx, again applying the same definition of the delta operator that is log x plus h minus log x and using the concept of logarithm if we have log m minus log n it can be written as log x plus h upon x so for the simplified form we have the answer as 1 plus h by x so to understand more properly one more example in detail we are taking the example of trigonometry and we'll try to understand how this forward differences of second order will be applied to find out delta 2 sin px plus q. It should be noted that these values p and q are considered to be constant will not play any role for the differences. So, if we define delta 2 we will start with the work of delta sin px plus q and according to the definition we will be getting sin px plus ph plus q minus sin px plus q and again we will use the concept of trigonometry to define sin minus sin we have 2 cosine px plus ph plus q plus px plus q divided by 2 into sin px plus ph plus q minus px minus q divided by 2. As a result, we get 2 sin ph by 2 into cos px plus q plus ph by 2. So, this is what we obtained for delta sin px plus q. Now, our original aim is to obtain delta 2. So, again I will apply the second order delta operator on the given answer which will not affect this first two terms that is 2 into sin ph by 2. So, as a result if we want to make it proper I will make one little change in the value that cos will be converted in terms of sin. So, it can be written as sin px plus q plus ph by 2 plus pi by 2. So, once again if we define the value as delta 2 that is 2 sin ph by 2 delta of sin px plus q plus ph by 2 plus pi by 2. And according to definition of delta, again we have the same result, sin ph by 2 will remain as it is throughout and as a result, this values will be simplified as sin px plus ph plus q plus ph by 2 plus pi by 2. minus sin px plus q plus ph by 2 plus pi by 2. So, again if we apply the result for sin minus sin you get the result as sin 2 sin ph by 2 into sin px plus q plus 3 ph by 2 plus pi by 2 plus px plus q plus ph by 2 plus pi by 2 whole divided by 2 into as a result, we again get the same sin ph by 2 answer. So, finally, we can write the answer as sin p 
pH by 2 the whole square into sin px plus q plus ph by 2 plus pi as a result. So, this is how we can obtain some finite differences for the different functions. Concluding the things uh, for evaluation, it in general form also we have some examples. So, let us take a look at a few more examples. That is first is to evaluate delta fx into gx. In this question, we will see how this value or how this difference is different from the usual differential rule d by dx of u into v. Right? The usual rule suggests us to do u into dv by dx plus v into du by dx. But as in forward differences, this formula will have some different answers. So, let us try to elaborate that part. As the definition, again we will apply f of x plus h g of x plus h minus f x into g x. To make it more simplified, we will adjust two middle terms as f of x plus h g of x plus h and I will add two more terms and add and subtract f x plus h g x plus f x plus h g x minus f x g x. We made this adjustment to make it more elaborate and simplified and now let us try to take some pairs of two two values. First pair is f of x plus h g x plus h minus f x plus h g x. Another pair is f x plus h g x minus f x g x. Now from the first two terms if you take f of x plus h common as a result you get g x plus h minus g x and from the second term if you take g x common as a result you get f of x plus h minus